Good day, ABM Business Finance Learners! In this video, we are going to discuss the introduction to investment and risk return trade-off. The most essential learning competencies are compare and contrast the different types of investments and explain the risk return trade-off. Let us define first what is investment. Investment in finance is a monetary asset purchased with the idea and hope that it will generate income in the future or will be sold for a higher price and brings profit to a seller. For example, Miss Mananahi purchased high-speed sewing machine to raise total curtains output is an investment. Since high-speed sewing machine will be used to produce more curtains, Miss Mana Nahi will consequently earn more income from selling additional outputs, which are the sewed curtains. In investing, research and planning is a must. Every type of investment has its own pros and cons and has different level of risks and returns. Not all things you buy with your money is an investment. Be mindful and cautious about where you spend your money with. So, what investment do you prefer? We have here the types of investment, and these are bank deposits, securities, other investments, and personal investments. Bank deposits, these are the money placed in financial institutions for safekeeping, and we have different types of bank deposits. First, we have the savings account. Savings account is the most common and least risky and it earns minimal interest makes it not be the best option for long-term investment. The second one is the checking account. It is a transactional account which often allows numerous withdrawals and unlimited deposits. Thus, it pays little or no interest at all. Businessmen or businessmen use this account for their business transactions. Salaries of employees usually falls in this account also. Next, we have time deposit account. Time deposit account is also called as term deposit. A bank pays higher interest than of savings account but cannot be withdrawn within a fixed term or period, for example, 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. Otherwise, it carries savings interest rate. Securities Investment Securities are financial instruments that hold value and can be traded between parties. An example, one example of security investment is bonds. Bonds is where an investor lends money to an entity that borrows the funds for a period of time that earns fixed interest rate. That's why bonds sometimes called fixed interest investment. Bonds can be corporate bond or government bond. A corporate bond is a type of debt securities that is issued by a firm or a corporation and sold to investors, while government bond is a debt security issued by a government to support government spending and obligations. Another type of security investment is equity. Equity gives an investor a stake in a company and a profit that a company earns. An example of equity are stocks and pooled funds. 
stocks can be common or preferred stocks. According to financial mentors, owning a stock is the best way to build wealth. Pooled funds and aggregate capital from a number of investors that is invested by a fund manager in various financial instruments, such as other securities which offer higher returns than bank deposit products, such as mutual funds, real estate government trusts, unit investment trust funds, and money market funds. We have here other types of investments. These are the real estate and properties. Real estate and properties is the safest investments among other investments and could be passed on to beneficiaries. It took long before the investors could realize its profits. Next, we have business. Business is where the owner invests capital to sell products. Could be goods or services to earn a profit. Next, we have insurances. Insurance is a legally binding contract that the policyholder gets some protection in financial aches when uncertainties happen. Insurances type are life, health, auto car, and long-term disability insurance. Next, we have collector items. Collector items is anything that can be sold in a higher price than it was bought. Next, we have commodities. To name a few, gold and silver are kinds of commodities. Its values grow in time which can result in a capital gains. Let us not set aside our personal investment okay so we should also invest in our talent and skills for example our cooking skills our communication skills we should invest in that because it would help us grow so the effort we do consistently in ourselves plays a large role in determining the quality of our life now and in the future next is good relationship good relationship is more than money it is the value you gain from nurturing authentic relationship with others next is our brand and our reputation our brand and reputation increases loyalty and builds confidence we should also invest in our health because ill health impairs our productivity and also hinders good opportunity investing to people so of course being consistently investing goodness to people makes them loyal to you and knowing that people surrounds you is loyal it allows you to have a peace of mind and feel secure and when you're feeling secure, you worry less. And you will have more energy to tackle other aspects of life. And last but not the least, we should also invest in our education. Because education is a powerful agent of change. Investment in education can bring the most out of us and a higher potential for us. Anything in this world has an advantages and disadvantages, so as the investment types. So let us present the pros and cons of any investment types. So in this part, investment will be grouped into three according to its features, advantages, and disadvantages. And the three groups are fixed income and equities. The second one is the alternative two fixed income and equities and number three are other investment assets okay for fixed income and equities we have here stocks bank deposits and bonds so 
Let us present first the advantages and disadvantages of stocks. Stocks, its advantages are it offers a high potential returns than bonds. Number two, it grows with the economy, thus stay ahead of inflation. Number three, earn passive income through dividends. And the disadvantages comes greater risk than bonds. Number two, takes time to research for each company in determining their profitability and stability. Number three, it is liquid. Now, next we have bank deposits. Bank deposits advantages are less risky. Number two, easy access, of course, except for term deposits or our time deposits. The disadvantages are it has a lower returns. And number two, it will not benefit when the market rises. Last, we have bonds. So, bonds advantages are it has a fixed high potential returns. Number two, less volatile and more stable compared to stocks. The disadvantages, it is less liquid. At number two, if not held until maturity, an investor might lose but still depend on the prevailing interest rates before termination. Now for alternatives to fixed income and equities, we have here the mutual funds and the UITF or the Unit Investment Trust Fund. For mutual funds, the advantages are no worries on portfolio management. Number two, dividend reinvestment, so compounding is working. Number three, it is convenient. The disadvantages for mutual funds are high expense on charge on sales. And number two, poorly executed trading. For our UITF, the advantages are it is easy to open account in most of banks. Number two, wide variety of funds to choose from. Number three, management fees is not costly. The disadvantage is that we have no right as investors, okay? So, for voting and dividends, we don't have a right for those. Okay, let us proceed to last investment type, which is the other investment assets. In this other investment assets, we have currencies, commodities, real estate, and insurance. Okay, so for currencies, the advantages are so much liquid. Number two, it has the largest market in the world. Number three, it is a medium of exchange in every human transaction. The disadvantages are it fluctuates frequently. Number two, we should monitor it closely. For commodities, the advantages are the advantage is it reduces the risk naturally in the price of an asset against inflation. The disadvantage, same as currencies, it involves an and it involves storage, transportation, and insurance costs. For real estate, the advantages are it appreciates over time. So, land doesn't depreciate, of course. And number two can be a source of income. The disadvantages is that large capital is needed, maintenance is costly, and sometimes it is difficult to sell. For insurance, the advantages are it is easy to deal with enforcing adverse financial consequences. And number two, it gives the insured peace of mind. The disadvantages, the additional responsibility and the cost of these insurances. Always remember that investment generates income or profit. Investment, any type of investment is prone to risk, but the question is, how high our tolerance to this risk that will come along? So we have here the risk return trade-off. 
but let us first define what is risk and what is return. Risk is the probability that actual return will be different from the expected return. While return is simply the profit on an investment. So, what is the risk-return trade-off? The risk-return trade-off states that the potential return rises with an increase in risk. Using this principle, Individuals associate low levels of uncertainty with low potential returns, and high levels of uncertainty or risk with high potential returns. According to the risk-return trade-off, invested money can render higher profits only if, only if the investor will accept a higher possibility of losses. Low level of uncertainty associates low potential return. Medium level of uncertainty or risk associates medium returns. And high level of risk also associates high potential returns. So, if you invest in a high-risk investment, there will be a chance of gaining a high potential return or a profit and a great loss at the same time. To put that in a perspective, let us consider these two investment options. So, option A, we have stocks and option B, we have bank time deposit. Expected return for option A is 20% and option B is 5%. Return range with 95% chance for option A, we have 7% to 33%. In option B, we have 4% to 6%. As we can see, option A has higher expected return, but there is also a higher degree of uncertainty or risk over actual returns because our actual returns could vary between 7% and 33% with a 95% chance. In option B, we are more or less assured of earning close to the expected return which is 5%. Thank you very much.